last time on Abandoned Comfort. We shared some of our deeper thoughts on why a smaller, blue water capable boat makes sense for the true shoestring sailor. We knew this would be controversial, but it needed to be said. Dream big, go small, start now. We are about to go in the slings. We are finally moving. strap is in a different spot. Yeah, the strap's in a different spot. Mostly the strap is right in front of the prop. Uh, because the way that the machine is situated, it wasn't able to get in that same exact spot where it's suggested uses and where it was before. But it seems okay. We'll see. They seemed pretty confident on it. Not too happy about this though. Night in the slings. I'm running through all of my checklists for what to do while we're in the slings. The gist of it is check all the seat cocks, make sure each one of those is closing properly. I'm gonna get a little bit of paint on my finger, wipe it into all of the holes, and then we're gonna finish up where the stands were. So you can see right here, paint isn't looking that great. It's because it was never redone. You can see the barrier layer and then the ablative layer. So, gotta shave that off and put on the new stuff. Yep, it's closed. Okay, you have to open it or leave it closed? Leave it closed. Everything's closed for the launch. It is a little windy, as you guys can hear. It is around 10 o'clock. I finally finished painting. We used all the rest of the paint. We are finally done, and so I can finally retire the suit. Finally going trash. All right, time to finish up some little things on deck, and then we're done. Done, done, done. Night, guys. All right, guys, good morning. It is launch day, and we're actually going to ride this thing down to the water. So <laughs> that's kind of cool. Typical yards, like once you're in the water, they'll let you hop on, open all the seacocks and go through and make sure everything's good. But they're just gonna let us take the, the elevator down, so this should be fun. <laughs> and we're actually going right now. <laughs> Folks, we are floating. So, get the bilge open the entire time, opening all of the seacocks that need to be opened. But while we're in the slings, we should try and have all the ones open that we need opened. That way, if there is a problem, they can haul us right back out. We are in the water, and it feels good. Rue is pretty excited about this. He's running around. I think he might have saw the snapper turtle. I got a kombucha this morning, which is like, the ultimate luxury for me in the morning. So thank you, Kelsey. Mm -hmm. And we're in the water, so it's, it's a good day. Yeah, so always nervous while it's going on, tying up, going back in, but now that we're back in Jeez. and there's no water coming in, it's good, feels really good. Man, it is feels like a whole nother boat once you get back in the water. Rebuilding the boat. Assembly time. Kelsey's gonna get the sup racks onto the stanchions for the port boat and I'm gonna go and grab said port boat carrying it like a big suitcase honestly it's like a hockey bag for me yeah but you know that was 18 years of my life so. we're kicking home water flushing out the bilge with fresh water and we leave all of our batteries off for this because our high water alarm is hardwired 
So if all the batteries are off and we're taking on water, the high water alarm will go off. So we do that exactly for this. We test the high water alarm just to make sure it is still working. Should be. It was on for pretty much all summer after Irma. So should be good. But we're also flushing out the bilge because it's got some nasty water from the, the other yard still in there. Sailmaker said that there's a correct way to fold the sail with battens. We obviously did not fold it correctly, so that probably didn't help the batten situation and probably why they ripped. So we are filming this so we know how to actually fold our sail. Got new line too. <laughs> yeah, I guess it came with it. I think $300 is worth a, a little bit of line too for free. Yeah. Time for the main event, literally. The old Yamar. Fired up for the first time in six months. I got Kels running through the engine checklist this time. Usually me, but we're gonna have Kels run through a lot of this stuff that I would do. I gotta get more comfortable with it. You gotta learn, girl. Oil is checked, oil looks good. Coolant, we added a little bit coolant. A strainer is clean. Raw water inlet. Oh, but I have to put back on the strainer. Okay, putting on the strainer. Main selector switch goes to two only on two for a couple seconds just to take the start load and then we switch it to all to charge both battery banks. Just checking the impeller. If the impeller is fried and it's not getting a lot of water through that'll be hot. All right she looks good. All right I can't even talk. All right just left the dock. Forgot to record that but we left. We're good. Casually making our way through here with like ranges from four inches underneath our keel to two and a half. So you know, it's a little tight. Two and a half feet. Two and a half feet, yeah. Not inches. I mean, we're seeing like seven on the, the depth gauge and we're having a grand old time. We're like, yeah, we're in like 40 feet of water. We were very nonchalant pulling out. Yeah. It was very, it was like we've done it a million times. It was very casual. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like we haven't done it for eight months. And I feel like we've hit like the point now where we're like, there's enough worrying about stuff. Like we know we have the procedure down and we know stuff's gonna happen. Before we kind of like felt like, oh, you know, like maybe it won't. It will. Just be prepared for that to happen and have that mindset. And that's it. You can't do anything else beyond that. All right, got the Navionics running, the old trusty iPad, and the depth gauge. Every other piece of electronics is off. Simple is better, folks. Simple is better. It's time for another segment of Old Salt Wisdom. Now, you see this iPad in front of me. It's like directly in front of me. And you might think, man, like he's, he's on the iPad the whole way. For about 95% of this lock, I have been looking out like we are right now and up here steering with my feet. So the old salt wisdom in this part is get your head out of the damn electronics. Kelsey, does that sound somewhat familiar? Yes. <laughs> Kelsey does it all the time. She's like staring at the trend line. It's just like, oh, I'm like you gotta look. You gotta take it in. There's other stuff going on. Crap I also, pots, I also stare at the compass. Yes. 
Yeah, and that, that's normal, because that's really, like if you're on a, a compass course, it's really easy to just stare at your trend line or stare at the compass, and then you're like back and forth, correcting both sides. The best way to steer off of that man, look at me dishing out advice this whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> I hate me already in this episode. <laughs> The best thing to do with that, and this is another Coast Guard thing that I learned, is you get a landmark and you measure it up. So right now I'm steering 285. So I mark up with this tree that's up here and I keep it directly on my bow at zero degrees right off my bow. And I steer on the landmark. I stare at the landmark. I don't stare at my compass. So there you have it. See ya. That's one for the old salts. Tie game. So as you guys can kind of see from us recording, the sun is starting to set. We're actually trying to take our time and we actually throttled down because we actually want to get there right at last light. When we came through the canal, we tied up to the dock because we couldn't get through. This time, we're going to be tying up to the dock so we are first through at high tide. At so, 3 a.m. At 3 a.m. So we're going to be tying up to the dock and it is right in front of the lock so that's why we want to wait to get there as late as possible in a way. So we're not impeding traffic so there isn't any collisions or any <laughs> damage. <laughs> Holy shit, collisions? I don't Man, know. Girl, this is the wild wild west of the Santa Cruz Canal for you. We're, we're showing up really late so no one else is coming through the lock when we're tying up on the side that goes out. All right, pretty much goal time arrival. Look at that beast. That is a beautiful full moon. Perfect for us to transit this pain in the ass. So we made it. The hardest part of the journey awaits us. <laughs> But we are tied up to the lock. I have this really cocked over, so that way to go right down by us. And like I said, it's just gonna be fishing boats that are out there. But back at our favorite spot in the whole wide world. God, I can't wait to be done with this. Almost there. Go take a look at the channel. Look at that sunset, it's gorgeous. A whole bunch of things jumping around in the water over here. No out of order sign this time. But the channel is that away. There's a big rock that's like right there under the water. I want to stay away from that. Let's get back on board. So I hate mosquitoes and I currently have welts all over my body from the last hour. But we have these amazing netting mosquito nets for your face. Mine has two openings, the top and the bottom. That's weird. It's meant for the neck, I believe. Ah. Uh, it literally looks like we're about to rob a bank or something. <laughs> Rue is like so suspect of us. It's like, what's going on, guys? He really wants to bark at us. All right, we got about six more hours until we can get high tide. Six more hours of this. You're looking good. It is. Almost 3 a.m. And here's our last challenge. Maybe through the lock, but this is the real challenge. Yeah. Well, we got the deepest tide, so let's do it, Meru. We didn't bump bottom at all coming out of the lock. I'm shocked, honestly. But take it. We got out. Hopefully never again we have to go through that system. No fun. Well, not during this time of year. During the summer it's cake. Yeah. Unless the locks broke. Yeah, unless the locks broke. All right, time to catch some Z's, thanks to our ultra anchor.